Three Austrian men become the first ever to receive bionic hands to replace their injured ones. The hands are controlled using nerves and muscles transplanted into the patient's arms, allowing them to complete tasks like holding food or throwing a ball. It's just the latest in a series of bionic medical breakthroughs. This year, a Minnesota man also received a bionic eye, allowing him to see his wife again after being blind for a decade. We're seeing his reaction to the results of that procedure for the first time. It's a pulsing light. It's That's not right. like regular vision where it's That's like right. constant. It's the flash, and I've got to be able to interpret the changes in That's that shape. Exactly right. Okay, let's okay. do it again. <laughs> His excitement is, is certainly contagious. Dr. Raymond Ayezi is an ophthalmologist and researcher at the Mayo Clinic. He performed the bionic eye procedure. I just want to tell our viewers there's a slight delay for us, doctor, but it shouldn't hamper our conversation too much. Just tell us a little bit about how this device works. Well, the retinal prosthesis and the bionic eye are nothing short of a medical miracle. Uh, this device allows a patient who's been blind for perhaps several decades to regain their sight through the use of a camera mounted on a pair of eyeglasses. Uh, the impact of this can be tremendous. And you installed 60 electrodes into the patient's eye. Does that, does that hurt? Does the patient feel that? No, he doesn't feel it. We're very careful in covering up uh, all of the, the tissues. In fact, if you were to look at Mr. Zerad, uh, you wouldn't know that he has a device uh, implanted. Uh, his glasses are the only, um, are the only uh, outside portion of the device that can be seen. Uh, it's truly a, a medical miracle. Unfortunately, in my field and here at Mayo, we're used to seeing medical miracles. Well, you say it's, it's been the highlight of your career, though. It certainly has. Uh, you know, it's the dream of every physician to have that kind of impact on an individual and on a family. And certainly, uh, it's, uh, I feel privileged and gifted to have been able to uh, have the, the ability to participate in that uh, for Mr. Zerad. It is, it is remarkable. I mean, just seeing the video and seeing the excitement and also his description of what he was seeing, the, the, the shapes and the shades and, and trying to put it together. Can you explain a little bit about what, what the patient is actually experiencing? Certainly. So, um, Mr. Zerit has a condition called retinitis pigmentosa, and what that has done, while his retina is largely healthy, it no longer has the pixels, if you will, the input uh, to the rest of the retina. The retinal prosthesis is a device that attempts to replace the function of those lost photoreceptors or pixels, and it does so by electrically stimulating the retina. The retina isn't normally electrically stimulated, so the percepts that Mr. Zerad sees are tiny flashes of light uh, organized in the 6 by 10 60 channel array. So Mr. Zerad has 60 points of stimulation or 60 pixels that allow him to interact with his environment and see. These tiny flashes of light do have about nine different levels of brightness, and by moving his head side to side, Mr. Zerad can reconstruct a scene. Wow. When you see him look at his wife for the first time in 10 years and you see them look at each other, it's, it, I mean, it, it, it certainly is impactful. And I think that's a little bit of an understatement. Is the goal of this device eventually, doctor, that someone would be able to see 2020? Where do you think this technology is going? Well, certainly over the past 25 years of development, it's been our dream as engineers to be able to design a device that can do that. Um, while Mr. Zared has tremendous benefit from 60 channels, if we were able to bring that up tenfold to 600 channels, we believe that Mr. Zared would be able to recognize faces. And ultimately, I think this is a matter of scale. If we can make a device that's 60 channels, well, I believe that we have the capacity to expand that and bring it up to 600 channels or even more. Wow. So I do have tremendous hope that we're going to improve the function of the devices and extend the reach beyond perhaps patients with just retinitis pigmentosa, perhaps to, to, to help patients with macular degeneration, or perhaps even those who've lost their sight 
due to the loss of their eyes, our wounded warriors, for example. Uh, before I let you go, I have to ask, how long do you think that'll take? You said 25 years to get to this point, but how far away are we from that a little bit better technology and to see it on a mass scale? Well, the answer to that question is always five years away, but that was the case 20 years ago. Uh, I think that um, now that we have experience and we have momentum, um, it's, it's hard to say, but I think that certainly in our lifetime uh, and in the viewers' lifetimes, we're going to see devices that function at a much higher level. Well, it's great to know that you're on the case. I know you're both an engineer as well as a doctor that lends your expertise particularly to, the, uh, to this. Uh, Dr. Ayazi, I hope this is not the last time that we talk, and we hope to have you back soon to talk about the other things that you're working on. Thank you so much for the time today. Thank you.